If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Finally, we are going to study about the advanced bell stage today. Sorry for all the delays on this video because I was very preoccupied with so much work. So I'm really sorry for making you wait so much. Anyways, today I will try to make this video as informative and as easy as possible. Also, I apologize to all those people who have requested me something, but I haven't been able to come up with a video yet. I hope you also understand that dentistry is so vast and it will probably take me <laughs> ages to complete all the topics. When And when I get 60, you will say that you are Anyways, today we are going to study about this advanced bell stage, which include two things. One is the, somebody texted me. One is the commencement of mineralization, means there is mineralization. And the second one, let me silent my phone. Yeah, and the second one is root formation. So two things are happening here, okay? First one is the commencement of mineralization and the second one is the root formation. So let us quickly draw a diagram which we had seen in the previous video. But if you haven't seen the video, I would suggest go check out that video first because it was the early bell stage. So we should go by sequence. So I'm going to quickly draw cells here. This is inner enamel epithelium. And this is the outer enamel epithelium. I'm drawing it quite roughly. When you draw in the examination, draw it properly. Actually, when you draw in the examination, we draw this way only. In fact, horrible than this because we don't have time. Okay, let me just label them. This is the outer enamel epithelium. This is the inner enamel epithelium. Actually, let me use the same color. This is the inner enamel epithelium. All right. And then we have few cells here. These are our odontoblast. So if I remove this blue outline here, let me just remove. You can already imagine the tooth formation. This is the cusp which is forming and then we'll have a root. If it is a multi-rooted tooth, it would look like this. And if it is single rooted tooth, it would look something like this, isn't it? Anyways, coming back to this image. So here you can imagine this forming as dentine because our odontoblast will form the dentine and this will form the enamel, isn't it? So the junction between them means the line between the green one and the blue one. That is the future dentino enamel junction okay so the formation of dentine occurs first as a layer along the future dento enamel junction in the region of the future cusp like here first of all dentine formation will start at this junction i'm drawing it in the wrong direction at the junction here on the future cusp tip and then it will proceed pulpally means here will be our expected pulp so this formation will then proceed pulpally let me just draw an arrow means it is forming that way it's starting here and forming going there all right and also apically means it starts here first and then it starts here the second thing which we need to keep in mind is that once this dentine has formed the first layer of dentine has formed then the cells, the amyloblast cells, which are in this region, they differentiate and they lay down enamel over this dentine. Means this has formed, this dentine has formed and then this enamel will form. Okay? Understood? Then this enamel formation will proceed coronally and then will proceed pulpally. Okay? So you can imagine there thickness increasing this way and the thickness increasing whoops and the thickness of dentine increasing this way isn't it okay you know imagining this is very difficult and imagining first and letting others imagine what you have imagined is even more difficult but i'm trying my best hope you get it 
now this enamel and this dentin they are forming and when they reach this portion right here which is the cemento enamel junction how am i saying this is cemento enamel junction because when the tooth will form obviously in this region will be our cementum because if this is going to be a root obviously this outer covering will be the cementum so when the dentine and enamel formation reaches this position where we have cemento cemento enamel junction then the root development starts all right so the enamel organ it forms a structure which is called as hers how to be epithelial root sheath so let me quickly draw how Hertwig epithelial root sheath looks like so the Hertwig epithelial root sheath it consists of an outer and inner enamel epithelium only so we have this red cells here let me draw a line first so we have some red cells here and we have these green cells here so we have only these two cells in the Hertwig epithelial root sheath but this inner enamel epithelium the iee here iee we make a star here to differentiate from this iee they are kind of twins but the difference is they're not congenital twins the difference is this iee it will not produce enamel okay so these cells they remain shorter and they do not produce enamel but the question arises why these cells are here then yaha kya kar rahe hain ye kaam dhanda nahi hai what these are doing they are inducing the dental papilla which is here to form these green cells that is they are inducing the dental papilla to form the odontoblast which will eventually form the dentine because we need dentine okay so for this purpose we have the ie here they are not involved in formation of enamel but they are inducing now let's say our odontoblast lay down dentine like this so this is how a dentin is formed and when this dentin has formed this epithelial root sheath it will lose its structural continuity and its relation to the root surface and some remnants will persist let's say these are the remnants that persist and they are called as rest of malasis okay so these epithelial remnants they are found in the periodontal ligament of the erupted teeth remember in the periodontal ligament of the erupted teeth we have these remnants and these are called as rest of malasis now we'll see how does the root formation occur in a single root first and then we'll proceed on how the formation of root occurs in multi rooted teeth okay so let me just move here and erase all these things to give you a more detailed idea on this so the root formation hasn't started let's say now what will happen we have a root sheath here and this root sheath it will form the epithelial diaphragm how it will bend this way here also and here also so this structure which is formed by bending this is called as the epithelial diaphragm and where they are bending they are actually bending at the future cemento enamel junction so they are actually bending here but i have shown a little more distance just to you know make things little clearer or let me just do it this way only okay so this is how it is okay at the future cemento enamel junction this epithelial diaphragm is forming so it is in a horizontal plane isn't it so it is actually narrowing down the cervical opening the cervical opening is getting shorter so when this is happening there is proliferation of the cells here which is in the pulp so there is proliferation of the cells the connective tissue of the pulp but this epithelial diaphragm it will not grow into this connective tissue what instead will happen there will be a structure something i showed you before so it will be something like this now as you know time progresses so what is happening here the epithelium which is coronal to the epithelial diaphragm it is forming we can see here so you can imagine everything happening 
here our dentin is forming this is elongating this is closing down and the connective tissue of the pulp is in the making while all this is happening at the same time the connective tissue of the dental sac which is surrounding the root sheath it proliferates and it invades the double layer we are having here and the epithelium which is present here it divides it into a number of strands okay so when it divides this connective tissue gets in direct contact with the dentine which is present here okay imagine this to be coming like so in between the gaps so when they come in contact with the outer cells of the dentine they form cementoblast or you can say they differentiate into cementoblast and they lay down cementum so this is how our cementum is going to form on the outermost surface here and here all right so the slenthering is happening cementum is depositing and by the time this opening will eventually shorten down and will form a small opening that is the pical foramen so this is how the root forms now in multi rooted teeth what happens is there is differential growth of this epithelial diaphragm okay and that causes the division of root trunk into two or three roots so when they are developing in multi rooted teeth they are developing in such a way that we have a small tongue like extension here at the cervical opening so for the multi rooted teeth what happens is we have the epithelial diaphragm here like so and it develops in such a way that we have tongue like extensions so if you are considering the lower molar we have two such extension and if you are considering the upper molar we have three such extension because of the number of roots so here let me draw a simple image this is how it starts this is during the growth of the tooth germ we have a simple diaphragm here and as the time progresses it will convert something like this we are getting a notch like thing here okay and as the time progresses it closes down and we have two roots this is for the two rooted teeth and for the three we have different let me draw here like so we have this simple diaphragm and it is converting something like this i'm not able to draw actually okay i think i did it <laughs> i'm not able to make it man okay let me just try this way like so okay and then these three will differentiate and will have three roots now sometimes what happens is the cells of epithelial root sheath may remain adherent to this dentine surface and they can produce enamel and that is called as the enamel pearl so there will be few droplets of enamel because of this and they are called as enamel pearls and sometimes they are found in the area of forcation of the roots of the permanent molar now you must be thinking how does accessory canal forms so our root is forming and here we have a pical foramen and this is the pulp now you must be wondering from where these accessory canals come from we have some accessory canals extra canals isn't it so if the continuity of our hairs is broken or not established prior to the dentine formation here there will be a defect in the dentinal wall of the pulpal throat so the dentine that will form it will have defect so this is how accessory root canals will develop so i hope you found this video helpful i tried my best to make you imagine so if you do like do give a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and share the video thanks for watching i love is